Okay, welcome all. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting. This webinar is about working with Python and R in origin. My name is Ishwar Ayer, Product Manager at Origin Lab. During the webinar, please use the QA window and the chat window. You can ask specific questions in the QA window. And if you have general comments, like maybe I'm talking too fast, I need to slow down, you can put that in the chat window. Please don't raise your hands because I'm not gonna be able to answer individual users because we have over 80 people who joined, okay? Appreciate that. Thank you for your cooperation. So we will send you an email with the recording, with the link to the recording for this webinar and the origin project that I'm using today. The project is self-contained. It will contain all the code that I'm gonna show and you will be able to download the project, play the recording and then play the recording back and forth, look at the project, play with it. And then if you have questions, of course, you're more than welcome to contact us and we will be glad to help you. In the email that we send, there will be a link to a very short survey. Please, please take that survey. Your feedback is very important for us. We want to know how this webinar was received, but much more than that, we also want to know what should we do to improve how things work in terms of using Python and R. Okay, so based on your feedback, we can work on adding and improving to this area in the next version, which is scheduled for release in October. We'll be opening up our beta testing sessions um, for the upcoming version. At the end of the program, I'll give you information on how you can be a beta tester if you are interested. Okay, all right. Again, any questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A window, please. Okay. Before I jump into Python and R, just a brief introduction to what are the programming options in Origin, okay? So when you have Origin installed, it comes with a scripting language called Laptop Scripting that has been around since version one. So it has evolved over the years and keeps evolving. And you could say somewhat similar to how you would script in MATLAB. It's syntax that's specific to origin. So you need to learn it. And shall I say, put it mildly, it's quirky because it needs some learning. Then we have origin C, which is ANSI C based. It has C++ and C sharp features. So everything is object oriented. You can talk to a worksheet, talk to a workbook, a worksheet, a column, a cell, a graph layer, whatever very expansive set of classes and methods and properties. If you are into C programming, that's an option. But today's focus <clears throat> from programming inside origin is Python because obviously it's a very popular programming language in science and engineering. And many of you may already be familiar with it and be already working with it or have a keen interest in learning. So the nice thing is when origin is installed, an embedded version of Python is installed with it. You don't even have to go looking anywhere to find Python and install. It's already there, baked in. And I'll show you the details, okay? Now, there are a few tools in origin. I wouldn't really call them programming per se, but they let you communicate with other products. So one of them is R console. That lets you run R in the background, send data to R, send some commands, make R do something on the data, bring back the results. I'll be showing that today. We also have MATLAB console, similar idea. You have MATLAB running, you run origin and MATLAB side by side, send data back and forth, send commands to MATLAB, do something to the data, bring back the result. Similar thing with mathematical link. So these are all available from under the connectivity menu. Okay, you can see them there. So that's as far as what's inside of origin. Now, what if you want to access origin from the outside? You have origin, say you have LabVIEW. You collect data with LabVIEW. We provide VIs that make it very easy for you to put a VI into LabVIEW 
grab your data, push it into origin. There are many examples of that. Okay, so you could look that up on our website. I can show you later where to find that. Okay. Then any client application, whether it's MATLAB, C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, Excel, all of those could communicate with origin from the outside because it just uses the automation server COM model to communicate between two applications in, on a Windows system, okay? Python falls under that too. So if you have an external Python already installed and you wish to stay outside and just push data into origin and do something in origin remotely from the outside Python, that's possible too. So the focus today is embedded Python, Python from outside or external Python and R, okay? This is a preliminary webinar. I am by no means a coding expert in any of these languages. My objective is to give you a bigger picture, big picture of what's possible. And then we take it from there. We really want your feedback. You need to contact us and then talk to us and we can see what to improve, what sort of coding examples we should provide. Somebody asks, would the outside Python work with Anaconda? I'll talk about that later. Any distribution of Python outside is fine. Any IDE is fine, okay? All right, so with those ground rules sort of on what this webinar is about, let me get started. So first I'm gonna focus on Python and then I'll come to R, okay? So first embedded Python, okay? So when you install Origin, like I said before, Python is automatically installed. We release Origin once every six months. And when we release, we may update the internal Python to whatever is the latest version, the latest stable version that we have tested. Okay, currently it is 3.8 that we are shipping with Origin 2020B. 2020B was released in October, okay? This embedded Python is accessible only within Origin. It's for you to use within Origin, okay? It has nothing to do with what you may have outside. It will not interfere with any Python installation you have outside, okay? The embedded Python comes with a Py origin package. You don't need to install anything. It's baked in, it's already there. You can import that module and start talking to origin, okay? There are also ways to install other packages in the embedded Python. For example, you want to install SciPy, NumPy, Scikit-learn. I'll show you examples of an app that uses Scikit-learn later. All of that's possible, okay? And again, that has nothing to do with what you have outside. It's a separate world inside Origin, okay? Version 2020B, we have made it really easy to install packages in the embedded Python, for the embedded Python, okay? I will talk about details of that later, okay? Now, where is all the documentation? Py origin is the main thing you need to work with when you are communicating with Python from inside origin. So there are several examples in this page. Um, so if you go to all books, there is Python. And if you go to Python, it talks about embedded Python and external Python accessing from external. I'm right now at embedded Python level. There are some beginning examples here and there are Py origin classes by origin global functions and examples. And we are working on adding more examples and all of this depends on your interest. You may ask, how do I write this? How do I write that? We may add more and more examples based on your feedback. So if you click Py origin classes, you will see there are quite a few classes. For example, if you want to talk to a column in origin, there is a column class, which has many different methods. Okay, so let me, just get started with some simple examples and we'll go from there. So for the first example, I'm gonna just take this data, send it over to Python, sort it and bring it back. Of course, origin can sort, but just to show you the basics, very basics. So I just have the code here, like I said before, all the code is in this project. We will give you this project, no other file is needed, okay? So just a few lines of code. So if you have just a few lines, you can go to connectivity and fire up the Python console, okay? So now with this Python console, you can start communicating with origin. 
the first thing to do is import pi origin okay okay that's done so now i want to send grab data and send data to this worksheet right i made the worksheet active so i can come here and say wks equal to pi origin dot active layer okay there is a concept in origin called active layer it's true for workbooks it's true for graphs with a workbook active layer means whichever sheet is visible is active okay so i'm just using that there are other ways to point to book 3 and grab sheet 1 and many different ways of doing that i'm taking the simplest approach here okay now i got that so now if you go type here what is wks python already has some reference to it okay now let me declare call 1 as an object which is the first column in that sheet and remember with python the indexing starts at 0 so column 1 will be column 0 so i am i am saying call 1 points to wks dot call 0 column 0 which is the first column okay sorry i had a typo there i need columns 0 okay all right now i pointed to the column let me grab the data so i am going to create an array in python where i say go to call 1 and get data okay now i have my data in python i type data there is my data okay let me sort it in python data dot sort okay let me type data again my python array is sorted now i want to put it back into column 2 okay so i declare call 2 equal to wks dot columns 1 okay because column 2 is 0 1 okay then i can say call 2 dot set data okay and then put in my sorted data array and there it is okay so this is very basic starting example okay so again i have my colleagues chris dostoski zeng shao and james chen who are panelists and they can answer some specific coding questions you have i may not be be able to pay attention and um answer all of the specific coding questions i see a question here saying where do i find python language reference for origin objects and methods i just showed that so if you go uh, for internal python like i showed you before you can go to our documentation area originlab.com/doc okay and then here is python okay and under python there is calling origin from out uh, origin from outside python or internal python okay running python inside origin so there are several examples here and the py origin classes and methods are all documented like i showed you before okay running python in origin okay and then the classes and methods there is a reference to that that i showed you earlier right okay let's see where is py origin let me search py origin on this page we are rearranging um, the documentation a bit to make it more friendly for you so as you navigate you may find that things may change a little bit so uh, just bear bear with that um, and you will be able to uh, see better documentation and better examples um, as we go along okay in the next few weeks okay now obviously i don't want to type python commands in the python console um if if it is significant amount of code somebody is already asking can i use code builder that was my next example so let me close the python console and let me go to example 2 here what i'm going to do is show you an example of how to take a signal and use scipy to do smoothing okay 
So again, I have the code right here. Okay, I'm going to copy this code. Okay, and obviously it will be tedious to execute this one line at a time from the Python console. I'm just copying it, and I'm going to go to Origins IDE Code Builder, and here I'm going to say, make me a new file. Okay. A Python file. As you can see, this is our ID for C files, origin script file, simple text file, HTML files, header files, many different options. So here I'm going to say smooth, or let me call it PySmooth. Okay. Okay. And then let me just paste it here. Okay. Let me explain a few things now. This now requires NumPy and SciPy. Okay. How to install that in the internal Python? Okay, so in 2020 B, we made it really easy. You just need to execute this one line of command. You just copy this, go to the script window, window script window, and type it. Put your package name here and hit enter. I'm not going to run it now because it might take time for it to find, go to the server, find SciPy, bring it back. SciPy has dependence like NumPy, all that will play out and it might take a while to install. So I'm not going to do that now, just showing you. This again is only in 2020B, we just introduced that. Also in 2020B, we improved our package manager. The package manager is just a little picky. It says I have to save my project before I fire it up. So this is an app. You can find apps from our app store, so to speak, what we call file exchange. We have been publishing many apps. We have over 200 apps for various analysis and graphing tasks. So if I come here and type Python, it will show me this particular app. Sorry, typo. Okay, I had already installed it. That's why there's a green check mark. Now if I fire it up, this makes it even more easy. You can just click the plus button, put in your package name, it'll go find it and install it. As you can see, I have installed many packages in my embedded Python. SciPy is there, NumPy, I also have Excel Writer, I'll be using that. I have Scikit-learn, I'll be showing you an example of that. So this makes it really easy. But this app was modified and it only works with 2020B. So my recommendation would be try everything after today with 2020B. You don't have a license for 2020B, I have some good news. You can go to our website, the main page, and on the right side, you will see COVID-19 special license. Okay, we know many of you are working from home. You may not have access to your PCs, your system. Maybe you have a network license. You can't connect to your system, whatever it is. You, can't, you can get a license, and currently that license will last till June 20th. So you have about a month, less than a month, to play with and it's a fully functional origin professional version one license per user you will get a product key and you can install it on one pc so i would recommend using this okay and then working with python it will make your life much easier we do have a blog that talks about how to install plugins for the embedded python for 2020b or later also for previous versions. Previous versions is really messy. It gets complicated. I wouldn't recommend it, okay? Okay, now that I have the um, code pasted here in Code Builder, let me quickly go through it and explain a few things, okay? I'm importing PyOrigin. As I said, you have to do that always, okay? Um, then I'm also importing NumPy as NP. I'm importing from SciPy, I'm importing Signal module because I'm going to use Signal. Then I have a few lines of code here. It's all commented. I'll quickly go through it. I'm pointing to the active layer. I'm getting the second column, which is the Y column here, the Signal column, okay? And I'm going to pass that to Python, sig equal to call sig dot get data. And then I'm doing a sig dtrend, signal dot dtrend, that's a function in that particular signal module in SciPy. And to pass an array to SciPy, it has to be an NP array, right? You may be familiar with that. That's why I had to import NumPy. So I take np.array sig, so I take my sig, which is the array pointing to my column, 
convert that to an NP array, pass it to signal.dtrend, which is a scipy function, and I get that back, and I put it in the third column. Then I take that further, and then I do a savitsky gole filter, and then bring it back and put it in the fourth column, okay? So that's the code, okay? Again, you can look at the code later. Any questions, you can email us. So for, once I write this code, how do I run it? So first thing, I have to save it. So let me go save as, oh, I'm sorry. I already saved it, PySmooth, okay? Um, let me just click the Save button to save it. The IDE that we have is was built primarily for origin C and laptop. So right now, unfortunately, it doesn't have a run capability and doesn't have debug capability, okay? We are working on it. That's coming in 2021. So how do I run it? To run it, I have to go to origin and in, from anywhere that script can run. You may be familiar with laptop scripting. One of the places that script can run a script window, I type run dash PYF. PYF means Python file, okay? And I just need to give the name. And the name of my file was PySmooth. Okay. So I type PySmooth.py. Okay. Now, Origin knows, has a hierarchy on where to look. If you just give a file name, it will first look in project to see anything attached to the project. Then it will look in the user files folder. There it is. Okay. So first it took the data and detrended it. It took off the linear part of the data. Then it did a savitsky gole filtering with 101 points as a second order filter. Okay, so now you get the idea that somebody is asking where should the file be saved? The file can be saved anywhere. C colon backslash temp. Then you just have to say here C colon backslash temp. Okay, let me show you another cool feature. Let me add this file to my workspace. Okay, add to workspace. So it will appear in this branch. Let me drag it and put it into project node. So origin has this concept where a project can not only just have your data and your graphs and whatever, it can also have attachments. So what I did is I took the file and attached it to the project. Now pysmooth.py is part of my project. Now if I save the project, send it to a colleague, they'll get this file, okay? So now how do I run it if it's attached to a project? Let me just save that in case it should be saved. Let me go back here. I'm going to clear these results, okay, clear. And I'm going to show you how to run it. I can go here and type the command, but I'm going to show you a slightly different way. I'm going to add a text object to this book and I'm going to call it run Python, okay? I right click on it go to properties. Origin has this nice feature. You can take a text label, go to the programming tab in properties, make it into a button, okay? Then I can put a command here, run dash PYP. So PYF is for an external file. PYP if it's in the project, okay? So run dash PYP, pysmode.py. Okay, run dash pyp, pysmooth.py, and click OK. Now you see it's a button. I click the button, it runs a Python code. So I basically built a template. And to do some analysis here, although trivial analysis, and maybe I do this every day, I have two columns of data coming in, I need to deep trend and smooth, and I prefer to use Python and not the algorithm in origin. Origin doesn't have a deep trend, by the way. You will have to fit linear and subtract or do a baseline or something. So this gives you a good idea that how you can take a small task or big task, whatever it is, code it in Python and make it part of your day-to-day -day origin routine, okay? So far so good. I hope I'm not speaking too fast. I tend to speak fast. If you have questions, please type them. We are all watching for questions, okay? Let's move on then. Let me show another example, okay? This, uh, my colleague James Chen just wrote this example a uh, couple of days ago. Uh, many users have asked us, 
gee, I have a worksheet in origin. I want to export it to Excel. We never implemented that in the GUI. But now with Python, it's easy. You have an XLSX writer plugin. You can just call upon that to use that to take a origin worksheet and spit it out into an Excel book. Okay, so that's the idea here. And again, note, you have to install the XLXS writer package, which I have already installed, okay? So let me copy the code here, Control C. By the way, just so you know, these note windows are using um, markdown syntax. Markdown is similar to HTML. So you can create nice um, notes in your project. And for code in markdown, you just need to put a tab in front of every line and then it will show nicely as code. If you select it, there is no context menu. You just right click and then you can go paste it. So now I'm going to create another file. I'm going to go to file, new. Remember, I have to say Python file. And then I'm going to say export XLS. Okay, dot PY. And then paste here and save it. So let's just go through this code quickly. I'm importing PyOrigin. I'm importing XLS writer. I'm again pointing to the active layer in the book here. And I'm setting up a file, pyorigin.getPath, pyorigin.pathUser. So what this is doing is this constant here is for the path to the user files folder in origin. I could put c, c backslash temp here. I could put whatever, just showing you there are methods and properties to get things from origin, such as where is my UFF. So in the UFF, I'm going to write the file as data.xlsx. Okay. And then I'm creating a workbook object in the Excel writer. Okay. With this file pointing to this file. And I add a sheet to that workbook object. So I'm basically building up my Excel file using that plugin. And then I have to then put each column from the worksheet into that structure. So that's what this does for I column in enumerate wks.column. So there is this nice enumerate function in Python, as you know. So all the columns in worksheet wks.columns will be the number of columns. It will loop through and it's getting the data, getting the units, getting the long name, putting that as header, unit, and data into the workbook structure and then finally close the workbook okay so let's run this and let me go here and then just make this book active go to script window and remember run dash pyf and file name okay uh, my zoom is getting in the way i forgot the name it's export XLS. Okay. So I type export XLS.py. Okay. That runs. So the file must be created. I can go to the help menu, go to open folder, user files folder. That's a quick way to find where is my user files folder. I go there. You see there is my file created today, 4 p.m. Okay. Double click, open Excel. There is my data. So let me show you. There is my Excel file. So everything here, of course, not the spark lines. Spark lines are an origin thing. Cannot export that, but all the data is there, all the text, the numbers, and everything. So I hope that gives you a perspective of the nice feature where you can go get a plugin that you know you may have already used, or somebody told you, hey, this is a cool pl plugin, it can do what you want. Maybe you find a, a posting in a research gate or wherever. Okay. And then come back and use that plugin and write your code. Okay. So for the embedded Python, I'm going to stop there. So I basically showed you the idea that origin comes with embedded Python. Okay. Uh, and then I can add more plugins and do coding and talk to origin, get data set data and all that. Somebody is asking, how do I code to open the resulting Excel file in Excel right after export? That's a Python question. I don't know the code. So you could look it up. Go Google how to open an Excel file in Python, right? Okay. So 
again, I'm by no means a Python expert. I'm just giving you the lay of the land, the big picture. And again, we can make examples, okay? We could add something to that example to pop up Excel at the end. I don't know how right now. I'll have to Google myself, okay? All right. Now we move on to external Python, okay? So with external Python, the idea is you can install any version of Python that you want and any flavor of IDE that you want outside. Maybe you have one already installed. Somebody already asked, can you work with Anaconda? Sure, go get your IDE, whatever is your favorite. Then use that to communicate with origin from the outside, okay? And to do that, we provide a package called origin ext, okay? So that origin ext package needs to be installed on your outside Python, okay? Origin ext documentation, I'll come to that to in a minute. Let me first show you what I did for the sake of this webinar. I installed an IB ID called Thorny. It's somewhat of an older IDE, but to me it was simpler. And to be honest with you, on my laptop, I installed Anaconda, nothing happened, zilch. I couldn't get it to work and I was not going to fight with it, okay? So as you know, if you're working with Python, you may need to set some environment variable. You may want to poke something here, poke something there. I don't know, I'm not an expert. I downloaded Tawny in a few minutes. I got it up and running. I was all set. I didn't have to tweak anything. So I am sticking with Tawny, okay? Now, let me load a simple example of external Python so we can go from there. So here is a simple example where I want to just send two columns of data to origin, okay? And I am going to fire up origin, send the data, save the project, and then close origin. So that's the plan, okay? Let me cop this, copy this code, okay? Control C. Now this has nothing to do with the current instance of origin. I can minimize that, okay? Let me close all of these other things here. Okay, let me close Excel. And in Tawny, I'm gonna paste my code, okay? And I'm gonna save it, file, save as, give it some name, example one, okay? Remember now I'm working from outside. This is not the Python that's embedded inside origin. This is outside Python. I have installed Python version 3.7 or whatever. I forget what the version was with Tawny, okay? So let me go through the code quickly. <laughs> Import origin ext as origin. This is important. You need to install the origin ext plugin in your outside Python. How do you do that? Depends on your IDE. With Tawny, I have a managed packages. Very easy for me to type something and install. I have already installed origin ext. There is also many other packages that come with Tawny, like NumPy, SciPy, everything is installed. Anaconda, the same. Anaconda may have a GUI to go fetch a package and bring it. So the origin ext package is out there. See, pypi.org py, project origin ext. That's where we put it up. So that's where you can find it from anywhere, right? Any outside Python, you can get the package, okay? So I already have the pack package. I import it as origin. Then this is key. I am declaring origin.application, okay? So that tells my external Python I'm referring to another application. Then the rest is really based on that. App.visible equal to one, that's to make origin visible. Origin can be run in the background. If I don't set that property, origin will be hidden. Things will still work. You can push data, save a project, go, around, go along happily with your Python work and origin would have saved the project in the background, okay? I'm just using visible so you can see what's going on. Then I am declaring a book name and creating a page. So there is a method to create a page, opt worksheet. That's the constant I use here to say I want a worksheet because in origin you can use, um, you can make a graph page, a metrics page, a worksheet page, workbook page, any of those. Call it my data and use an origin template. Everything in origin is based on templates. The default book in origin is based on a template, okay? Somebody is asking, do you update origin ext along with major updates of origin? Well, origin ext is independent of origin. So we can update it anytime, okay? So if there are things lacking, we may add and we really need your feedback so we can keep adding to it, okay? 
Okay. So then I refer to the first sheet in that book, layers zero. Remember, a book has multiple layers, and layer means sheet in the book context, layer zero. And then I'm pointing to column one, similar to what we did from the internal Python. I'm setting its long name. Then I'm setting data using just an array manually. I'm going to column two, setting values in columns two, calling it y values. And then I'm doing an app.save. So the save method lets me save the project to whatever name and path I give. And to make things a little more clear, I'm putting a time delay here, you will see. And then finally, I do an app exit and delete my app. So let me just run this and let's see what happens. Okay, I'll move, shrink this a bit and I'm gonna go click the run button. So what this does is in the background, it's asking the operating system to launch origin. Okay, a new instance of origin launched. Okay, then the code continues. The code pushed everything here. The code already saved the project. It's just waiting. I put the wait statement so it doesn't immediately disappear. So you can see what's going on. So now you see origin closed. So you could do something like this with your data acquisition or with whatever calculations that you're doing. At the end of your Python code, fire up origin, push the data, save the project, quit origin. Next day, you go to where it is. So I saved it to C temp. Okay, so let's go to C temp. So C colon backslash temp, and you will see there is my file date stamp and time 408 p.m. Double click on it, it'll launch origin and you will see the exact data that I sent in. Okay, so there is my book, my data, and there is my X values, there is my Y values, just like what was in the code, right? So I hope the idea here is clear. From outside, you can launch origin, talk to it, send data, save project, and I'll show you a few more examples how to do more with it. So let me read the questions here. Where do I find reference guide for current version of origin EXT? Good question. So let me go back to my origin um, here, okay? And for the documentation part, what happens, like I told you much before, is that from outside, it's any client that talks to origin, whether it's Python, whether it's LabVIEW, whether it's MATLAB, whether it's C Sharp. So all of that hinges on our documentation for uh, automation server, okay? OriginLab.com slash doc. If I go there, you will see there is an entry called automation server. That means talking to origin as a server from an outside client application, whatever that application may be. So here are the origin com classes, okay? One of the class is application. Another is application SI. I'll show you what these mean. And next one, I'm gonna use application SI. There is a column, right? If you click on that, you may see examples of, um, if you drill down, you'll see several examples. There is also an example area, different examples that are shown for OPJ file access, floating worksheet with metrics data and so on. So if you click on it, it might give you uh, some examples that are C sharp, VB, VC. Sometimes you will see a Python example. So this is where you come in. If you are interested in working with outside Python and talking to origin and you want more and more Python examples, talk to us. We'll make those examples, okay? All right, so let me go back to the code and show you a couple more examples so you get the idea. So here now, I have an example of sending data to a matrix instead of a worksheet. Let me copy the code, okay? Let me go over here. Okay, my colleague Chris Dorostowski just gave me this code this morning. Thank you, Chris. So now I'm gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna not gonna launch a new instance of origin. I'm gonna just work with the origin version that's hanging around, okay? So let me say new and I paste the code here and I'm gonna save it, file, save as, and I'm gonna give it a name, okay? Send data to metrics, whatever name, okay? 
This time around, let me not just run it. Let me debug it so you can see what's going on. Okay. So I'm going to turn on debug mode in Thorny. Okay. So first line, import origin, ext as origin. Okay. Let me run that. Next one, I'm using NumPy, or rather Chris's code is using NumPy. So import that. Then there are a bunch of lines here. I'm not going to take the time explaining what's happening here. Chris is making an array in NumPy. Okay. I'll just run through those. Okay. This next line is important. <laughs> remember last time we used origin.application? And remember I told you there is application SI. So the difference between those is that application means a new instance. Application SI means connect to the origin that's already running, which is what I want this time. You may want to work in that mode. You may have both origin already running, crunching some data. You don't want to install in uh, launch a new instance. So let me connect. So it's already connected. Now I'm creating a page, but this time I'm using opt metrics. So it will create a metrics page. Okay, see, there is my metrics page. Okay. Let me plug along here. I'm going to declare layer zero, the first sheet, and I'm setting a name. You see the name changed. Okay. I'm going to set the number of columns, number of rows. Those all come from the array that was created in NumPy before. Okay. And then this code loops through the NumPy array, splits it up, and sends each array into individual metrics objects in that sheet. So let me just run it. That's it. That's the end of my code. Now you see, I'm working with the existing origin. No new origin launched. I go here immediately. I click and in the latest version of origin, we have these toolbars, very convenient um, pop-up mini toolbars with buttons. So if I click this button, which is to show the image, you can see that code pushed in five metrics objects. An origin metrics book can have multiple sheets. Each sheet can have multiple objects. They all look the same in the image, but you can see the data is all different. And what Chris's code was doing was sequentially increasing the number. So you can see as we go along, right? The numbers are increasing. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, you can push data into a worksheet. You can push data into a metrics, okay? Now comes the next big question. What do I do then? After pushing data into origin, what do I do? You may use origin for the nice graphs and the powerful analysis that is built in into origin. Do you need to code everything from Python? If you are a purist and you want to code everything, you could do so. But let me show you an alternate approach where you make use of the power of origins GUI to set up what we call an analysis template. Once you set up the template, you can push in new data and everything magically updates. Okay, so let's do that. So here I have a worksheet with a few data points. I have a floating graph here, just like Excel, you can float a graph or you can make it part of a, another sheet. There are techniques for that. There are tutorials for that. You can look all of that up. I'm going to double click to open this graph and I'm going to do a linear regression from GUI, no coding. Okay. I just want a simple linear regression. I don't want to bother learning how to code linear regression in origin. Okay, so I go to fitting, linear fit, open dialog. Okay. So the standard linear regression dialog opens. There are many settings here. I'm just going to go change a couple of things. I'm going to go add confidence and prediction bands to my <clears throat> origin, uh, to my results, sorry, and click OK. Okay, and then origin does its thing, it fits, and the book will have all the related um, results and the detailed report. You know all this if you have worked with origin. So let me quickly customize this table here. I'm going to right click and say quantities in table. I don't want, to want all of these quantities. I just want to show intercept and slope. Okay, and the adjusted R square. Okay, and I'm going to make that a little big, bigger so it's readable. Okay, so you can see it did a good fit, adjusted R squared of 0.98. I can put the graph back in there. So now what I have is an analysis template. Okay, I have my data, I have my graph, I have my analysis. Let me go change this number. Let me just make this one and two. You see the data change, but the fit hasn't updated. 
that's because when I set up the fit, I have an option. I can set it up as auto or manual. By default, origin sets it as manual. If you set things as manual, when there are operations pending in origin, there will be a button here, a global button. You can click that to update all the operations. You can also click at the individual level to update a single operation. Okay, perhaps you already know that. So let me just update. So you see the operation ran again and it updated. I didn't have to change any code, right? That's the beauty of analysis template. That's all well and good. How do I send data to this template from Python? From outside. So let me go copy the code. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to Thorny and start a new file. Okay, paste the code here and this time save it as analysis template example. Okay, and let me run it line by line so you can see what's going on. Okay, let me go here, remove that, go back to Thorny, I'll move this to the side and I'm gonna debug. Okay, so again, import origin ext as origin, app dot or, or app equals origin dot application as si connect to the already running origin active page layer zero and now i have an array a 2d array in that is the data i want to send so watch what happens that's going to change that data right i set the array and i set it into origin so the data change the graph updated with the data but the operation still hasn't run but there is a method to update all the operations, app.run. So I can include that in my Python code. And now if I execute that, the operation will kick in, everything updated, my numbers updated, everything is all set. I could add more code here to save this project. So this is the idea we wanted to promote that you don't really need to code everything in origin. If you're already familiar with origin and analysis templates, make those templates. We can help you make templates. If there is a certain analysis that you want to do, you don't know how to do, tech support is always helping customers create templates and we have several examples, tutorials, videos, we can help you. And then you do your thing in Python, whatever it is, data acquisition, your number crunching. And when you finally want a beautiful graph and some custom analysis in origin, just fire up origin, open a template, dump in the data, let everything update, save the project and you're done. Okay, any questions? That's what I wanted to show for Python today. I'll come back to a Python app later. And here again, it's very critical that we need your feedback on what we should improve, okay? Okay, somebody asked, how do I update a single operation from the code instead of updating all operations? There are methods I believe to point to a particular object and say, update that operation. Sorry, I don't know the answer, but we can send you the answer and we can maybe make an example of that. Okay, good question. Okay. All right. Now, so, so basically to summarize, you have embedded Python that comes with origin. There is a Py origin module that's already available. You don't need to install anything. You can use that to communicate with Python and do calculations while you're inside origin. External Python, you need to get and install the origin ext package in whatever flavor of python you are using outside whatever ide and then you can talk to origin from outside and push data you can also send commands you can do many things it's very extensive programming so if you are really into programming you can look at all these you can look through all these classes and see what's available okay it's very extensive okay let's move on to r okay the situation with R is simpler, okay? R is installed outside and you communicate with R. That's it. There is no internal R, external R, okay? Okay? When you install R on your machine, then you come to origin, you will have access to R via a console. You can run an R file or you can run R commands from laptop script. So I'm going to show you a few examples of that, okay? Number one. Here I have some signal. I want to use a spline smoothing method available in R to smooth this data. Origin has smoothing too, but I just wanted to keep the first example very simple. Okay, so let me make this active. I'll put this code over here so I can still see what I'm doing. Okay, 
and I'm going to make this book a little less tall. Okay. And I have a column here already waiting to receive the result from R. So let me go to connectivity and open R console. Okay, so there's my R console. The idea here is data transfer back and forth. We provided an easy GUI for it. So what I want to do is to send the X and Y data and do the spline fit basically. Okay, so I'm going to click this button, click on the first column, come back. It got the reference. Origin has this reference book, sheet, column, whatever. You could, of course, type things in here too. Okay, you can look up the documentation for all that. But the easiest way is to just hunt. Okay, I'm going to call this X data. Okay, and I'm going to send it over to R. This is the button send origin data set to R variable. Okay, click that. I'll come here, do ls to list. You see there is X data. Okay, if I type X data, it will show me all the values. Okay, let me go there, do that to column B. And I'm going to call this Y data. Okay, and I'm going to send that over. Now, if I type LS, you'll see there is X data and Y data. Now I got my data in R. What you're typing here are R commands. This is the R console, right? So now I want to smooth it. So let me go grab this line so I don't have to type it and do any stupid typing mistakes. Copy, okay, come here, paste. So what this does is it use smooth.spline, takes the X data, Y data with degree of freedom or whatever that variable is and put it into a structure called smooth. <laughs> okay, now if I type LS, you will see there are three things, X data, Y data and smooth. Now the syntax for bringing back just the Y part of that smooth data in R is smooth dollar Y. Okay, so I go here and I say, I wanna get smooth dollar Y from R and I click this button and click this column. That's where I wanna receive it. And I click this button, which is to bring from R to origin the other way. And there it is, okay? So now you get the idea that <clears throat> You can install R, you may already have it. Many universities already have it. It can be R on your PC or R server, both are available, okay? So in the, in the connectivity menu, we have options for both. Origin can communicate with R installed locally or R serve, okay? Let me move on to a slightly more fancy example, okay? So this is a random walk example. Let me click this link to open the page. So in our documentation, there is R and R console documentation under communication with other applications. And here we have several examples of working with R to do some nifty things. One is to install the boot and Gensa package to do some bootstrapping, okay? Another is for a random walk example. There is simulated annealing example, moving, uh, Manova example, it really, if you are an expert in R, you could do any of these. Let me stick to the random walk example. So I'm gonna just copy these lines of code. Okay, control C, done with that. I'm gonna to come to my R console. Okay, and I'm just gonna paste it here. Okay, so what this does, and trust me, I'm not an R expert, so it's, it's simulating a random walk by starting at position zero, zero and taking random steps in both X and Y directions for N number of steps. Like it's called the drunkard's walk, right? And I've seen references like that too. So let's just run this code. So what the, this did was to create a structure called walk, okay? I wanna get that into origin. To do that, I have three columns that are waiting to receive that. So I click this, I select all three columns. Okay, click done. Obviously it's not a vector, it's a matrix. There is also a data frame. I don't have an example for data frame today. We may put up more examples. Now I go here and type the variable in R, walk, and I wanna bring it over. Okay, this says matrix, it's not really a matrix. 
it comes into the worksheet as an array, an X, Y array. Click OK. There is my data. OK, let's make a nice graph in origin. I'm going to take this and make a plot, line plot. So you can see that this was how the random walk computation was done. It started at 0, 0 and walked randomly. It, in this case, it happened to go all in the positive y direction. It's just random, right? Let me do a nifty thing. This is the sequence, the walk sequence, the step, step one, step two, step three. I can come to origin, click here and say, hey, origin, take every point and do a color mapping on the sequence. Now I have it color mapped. Maybe I don't like this color. I can go to color list. I can choose some other color. Let me pick uh, this red to white. Let me go to this layer and let me put a background color of black. Okay, whatever customization you want to do in origin. Okay, sorry, um, fill color, fill color of black. Okay, so there is my random walk. Okay, started with red and ended with white, the steps. Okay, now let me do one more thing. I'm going to go into the access dialog in origin. I'm going to go to scale tab and I'm going to set hold shift key, hold both vertical and horizontal and set the rescale to auto. Okay, so that if the data changes, the graph will change. Okay, I can now come back to R and run the same code again. Okay, of course, you could do this from a file. I'm just doing it manually. And then bring in the data again. You see, it changed. I can go back, run again. Okay, bring it back again. There is my new simulation. So the idea here is, you may know R very well to do all your computation and such, but if you want to make a publication quality graph, you may not want to fight with coding there. Just dump the data into origin and do an interactive graph, set it up the way as pleasing as you like, and then publish it, right? So that's the idea, okay? I will show one more example of accessing R from laptop because some of you may be familiar with laptop scripting. So you may want to integrate this uh, R into your script. You may run laptop script and do something. And then in that process call R and send commands to it and then um, get the results. Okay, so I'm using the same smoothing example as before, but this time I'm running it as a laptop script. So I'm going to the script window and I'm going to put the commands here. So the first command is r.init. So when you use the console, that does the job of initializing R. When you run it from script, you have to initialize. So R is running. Then I have send data and execute the same smooth spline that I did before, remember? I just used a little different degree of freedom here. And at the end, you can put r.reset to reset all the variables. So in the script window, I can select all of this. Of course, I could put this as a script file and run and click, and then that did the job. It sent the data to R, did the smoothing, brought back the result. Okay, so that's the idea. Any questions? We are at the one hour mark. I'll just take a few more minutes to talk about some important things. So basically, I hope I gave you a big picture view of what you can do with Python and R as an origin user, okay? I'm sure after this webinar, tomorrow you wake up, you may have 10 questions. We love that, we want those questions. So please communicate with us. Before I end, I want to emphasize one other point, okay? You are welcome to code and do everything yourself, but Origin Lab can also do the coding for you and make it in the form of apps for you. So the beauty of this is because Python is already installed, we can tap into Python to do some advanced app, something that Origin cannot do. We can tap into R to do similar things. So I'm going to show you two examples. The first example is a support vector machine classification app, SVM app. And this is based on scikit-learn. So the scikit-learn plugin for Python lets you do many things, classification, regression, clustering, and such. We took just one aspect of it and created an example. So let me explain the example, and then I will show you the app. Obviously, I'm not going to run the code. The app has the code. We built the app for you, okay? There is an app page. Like I said, 
you can go download the app and install and it becomes part of your origin. It's an extra tool. And here is the explanation. So this app requires NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Scikit-Image setup tools. We don't install them always ourselves because maybe we shouldn't install Scikit-Learn. So we leave it to you to install. And that's where the package manager comes in. You can use the package manager to install all of the plugins needed, which I have already done. I have installed all of these for my embedded Python. Remember, this is inside origin for the embedded Python. So everything is all set. So these plugins are available. So now I can fire up the app. Let me explain what this app is going to do. I have here the classic Fisher's Iris data, data from flowers, sepal length versus width for different species. Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. So I have plotted the two quantities here. And as you can see, Setosa is pretty well distinguished, whereas Versicolor and Virginica kind of overlap. The objective of this SVM classification is to see, can I divide up this um, two-dimensional space into three areas that are distinctly Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica? That's the idea. Okay, somebody is asking, can you call external code from the apps? Yes, if you write a DLL with C++, whatever, you could call, load up that DLL and call. The app can be coded, app is primarily coded with origin C, but from there, you can tap into Python, you can tap into R. So we have several examples. We can also put up more explicit documentation on how to do all this, okay? When we publish an app, we don't publish the source code, but we can give you sam sample code for various tasks. So let me fire up SVM classification, okay? Uh, sorry. It needs to have the worksheet active. So some apps require worksheet active, some require graph active, okay? So here I need to put in my X. My X actually is both columns. That's my input, okay? It may be a bit misleading to call it X. The second one is training. The training says, what species is each point corresponding to? So I will select the species column. You can do predictions with this app. So if you have new flowers and you do not know what category, what species they are, you can do prediction. I'm not gonna go into those details today. I'm just showing you the concept. You can go to options. I can put in my parameters. Okay, there are many different options here for kernel and such. And for the output, there is a territorial map. I have checked that. And let me just click OK and let the app do its magic, OK? Or rather call Python and do the thing, OK? Not magic. Then it creates a detailed report, just like you get for linear regression or whatever. You scroll down here. Here is a territorial map. Let me double click to open that graph. This graph uses some transparency settings, so it's a bit slow in performance, OK? Now let me show you the original raw data that I had and what this app did. So you can see, like I said before, Virginica is very clearly distinguished. So you can see that every point in that species got clearly marked in that distinct area, right? Whereas Versicolor and Setosa, sorry, Setosa is distinguished clearly, whereas Virginica and Versicolor have some leakage. It's hard to, the, even the app cannot do anything magical, right? Cannot chop up this 2D space into, this is chopping up into, um, how do I say, convex blocks. So that's what the app does, okay? So the message to you, you is, you know of a certain Python plugin, it can do the thing for you, you don't wanna struggle with coding it, you tell us what app to build, okay? Similar thing, let me show you with R. So we created an app for neural network fitting. I have it already installed, okay? So I'm going to just right click on that app. It comes with a nifty sample. I'm just going to drag that sample into origin and add it, okay? Okay, so here it is. So this app already did the work for me. Let me just undo that, okay? I'm just gonna kill the result so I can show it to you from scratch, okay? It's complaining for some reason. Let me just delete. And there goes my result. I have the raw data. I wanna fit this without using any peak function or whatever. I just wanna use the data trend and I wanna use a neural network algorithm to do it. R has that plugin. 
Okay, so when you install an R app, we go get all the required plugins as long as we have the permission to do that. If it's a public domain plugin, whatever. So this app already has it all installed. Okay, and here are some instructions for me on what settings to use. So just do I don't lose them. Let me put them to the side there and let me start with the app and let me fire up the neural network app. Okay, so now it already picked up the graph and it notes it's supposed to fit the graph under options. There are several options. What do these exactly mean? I can't explain to you right now. You have to look up the algorithms and the meanings. It's basically documentation of the R plugin. We are just providing the GUI. So I am putting in certain parameters here for the neural network, number of layers one, number of hidden neurons one and two, training repetition three, neural network algorithm, resilient background propagation with backtracking, error function sum of squares, activation function tangent hyperbolicus. Okay, that's what my R&D guy told me I should use. Okay, that's what I'm using. Click OK. It does the analysis. It's running the R app in the background. Neural network fitting can be a bit slow. Okay, this is not origins issue. We are just calling R and R is computing and we are just waiting for R to finish the computing before we can bring back the numbers and put it back into the graph. Okay, hopefully everything goes well. My earlier, and there it is, right? So there is the fit using neural network. Okay. Okay. Now, I hope then the picture is clear. If you are into coding, you're welcome to code. We are here to help you contact us. If you would rather have us make apps, tell us about it. And if it's an app we can easily make, we would be happy to do it. Apps are free. We want to provide apps as a service to the user community. Okay. So let me close with a few important points. First of all, thank you for attending. We are really thrilled that many origin users are attending these webinars. We hope they are useful to you. We need your feedback. We'll be sending you an email. There will be a mini survey. Please click on that survey link and give us feedback. Okay. Origin 2021 to be released in October. We plan to make key improvements to how Python works with origin. Okay. Things will be made easier. We'll provide more examples. Okay. Would you like to be a beta tester for this upcoming version? Email us beta test at originlab.com. Okay. We will consider adding you as a beta tester and then we will give you the beta bills and work with you. Okay. In the meantime, how to get help? Please contact tech at originlab.com. Also, for Python, we just started a new forum. We have seeded it with a couple of uh, posts and already I see some users are asking questions. Python multiple plots on same graph, for example. Okay, the question just came in today. So we'll look into it and answer. So the forum has many sub forums, a basic origin forum, laptop forum. We just added the Python forum. So we encourage you to use that as well. Okay. So that's where I am stopping today. Hopefully this was useful to you. I really apologize for that crash. I think the culprit is this package manager. I need to see if I can reproduce so developers can look into it. If you just install from the script, as I told you, if you work with embedded Python, there is a very simple way to install right from the script. You can just go type in the command, um, install Python packages zero scipy, again, in the latest version of origin whatever is the module that you're trying to install. Okay. Happy programming. Stay safe and stay healthy. We'll keep the Q&A and chat open for a while so you can continue asking questions.